does cutting interest rates mean the economy is doing bad? So that was one of the questions that I got as a comment from the latest video that I did, that video titled how to trade the trend without hesitation. So I'm going to click, put, put it up here on top. So just click on the pop up if you want to watch that video. Essentially in that video, I went over the Bank of Canada as well as the Reserve Bank of Australia, right, to try and paint a picture of the divergence that we're seeing between those two economies. So I'm going to answer that question in this video. And simply how I answered that question uh, in the comment, obviously, was that it depends on the context, right? Sometimes you might hear that a central bank has performed a hawkish cut, which means that they cut interest rates, but then it was a hawkish cut. How can that possibly be a hawkish cut? Maybe the central bank actually revised their inflation projections higher, right? Of which that would be sort of counterproductive towards or counter counter interest rate cuts essentially if you if you're expecting inflation to go higher why would you cut interest rates if you expect inflation to go higher right so or maybe if the central bank cuts interest rates but the economy is still doing good there's still growth in the economy so on and so forth so that is why i said it depends on the context but for the purpose of this video i'm going to dive deeper into the canadian economy so that i can re-emphasize why i'm so bearish on the canadian dollar right so Obviously, for reference purposes, it's with reference to this trade right here. So this uh, uh, AUD CAD trade, as you can see, I'm st I still have the very same trade running and we're still in profits, obviously. But let's go into more detail with the Canadian economy, right? So let's look at this first article here. So Bank of Canada governor raises prospect of faster rate cuts. This is a Financial Times report, right? So Bank of Canada, uh, Tiff McClam has opened the door to stepping up the pace of interest rate cuts, the Financial Times reported on Sunday. Macklem told the newspaper in an interview that rate setters are concerned about Canada's labor budget and the possibility of lower oil prices hitting the economy. We've all seen how uh, oil prices have been falling, right? Obviously, we do expect they are going to start rebounding very soon, but this is what he's referring to here, right? Obvious, obviously, because the Canadian the Canadian economy, sorry, is a is an exporter of oil, right? So they they export oil. So if oil prices are falling, it has a negative impact in their GDP, right? Or a negative contribution to GDP, essentially. So as you get closer to the target, this is what he says: your risk management calculus changes. Macklem told the newspaper, "You become more concerned about the downside risks." and the labor market is pointing to some downside risks. This is what he's saying, right? And if that's the case, then that means that they're going to continue cutting rates, right? So the Bank of Canada, after keeping its, its key policy rate at 5%, a more than two decade high for a year has trimmed it by a quarter point three times in a row since June, bringing it down by 75 basis points to 4.25% earlier this month. Overall, inflation in Canada in July fell to a 40 month low of twenty of two point five percent, Macklem said. Sorry, guys. Macklem said last week that while the bank saw growth strengthening, there were some downside risks to the expected pickup. Then trade disruptions may mean larger deviations of inflation from the two percent target. He said in a speech to the Canada UK Chamber of uh, Com Commerce in London. Right. So pretty much here, what he mentioned or he made emphasis on was the labor market. So how has the labor market been tracking? Right. So I'm gonna give you that give you guys more of a quick update uh, on that obviously uh it's something that i've that i've that, that i've that i've looked into or uh, because i'm always up to date with what is happening with different central banks and different economies but in essence here's what happened unemployment rate in canada rose to 6.4 percent then to 6.6 percent highest since october 2021 that is where unemployment currently sits at 6.6 percent right job finding the, the job findings rate is actually slowing down and the labor market is softening. Uh, obviously, they still mention that uh, elevated wages are also expected to go lower, right? But in essence, the picture is not looking pretty, pretty bright for the Canadian labor market, right? That is what we have in terms of unemployment. Now, if you're looking at things like uh, like inflation, right? So inflation headline headline cpi let's start with headline inflation headline inflation was projected at 2.3 percent in the third quarter and 2.4 percent in the fourth quarter currently it sits at 2.5 percent it fell to 2.5 percent in july slightly higher than the projections but obviously we still have the september the september reading right then so we have the august reading which is obviously coming 
is it tomorrow tomorrow or wednesday but this week we're definitely having uh canadian inflation uh data being released then core inflation remember when you, when we refer to core inflation it's about the median and the trimmed mean uh that those are actually projected to be around 2.5 percent in the third quarter 2.4 in the fourth quarter uh currently median cpi has actually fell to 2.4 percent whereas the trimmed mean actually slowed down but it's still a bit elevated at 2.7 percent then obviously they also emphasized if you read the central bank statement they also made emphasis of shelter inflation of which the the most latest cpi report that we got it, it showed that shelter inflation had actually decreased to 5.7 from 6.2 and services inflation had also slowed to 4.4 from 4.8 because both services and shelter those were the those were those are the two sub components that the, that the Bank of Canada were actually concerned about. So this essentially points to the fact that the Canadian economy is not doing well. So in this regard, to answer that question, yes, cutting interest rates for the Bank of Canada means that the economy is not doing well, right? That is in simple in simple terms to just answer that question. But then, lastly, I'm gonna go into this actual uh, into this article here. Right, so let's look at this article. I would I would also find it on Reuters, but then I, um, I don't want to keep uh, scrolling around. So let us actually look at this article here. Uh, okay, because there's another article here that, that, that paints more of a clearer picture in terms of uh in terms of how the consumers are actually being negatively negatively impacted by the higher interest rates right um let's see okay let me search again Here's this account. Here's this article here. So, essentially, that the, how this article is titled is that Canadians still feeling the economic pain despite three early rate cuts, right? So that the headline in itself, if you really know the story with the Canadian economy, it it tells you the picture. It paints a very clear picture of what is happening, right? But in essence, I'm just gonna briefly read through it. Uh, so, despite three interest rate cuts since June, Canadian consumers still appear to be feeling more stressed than their neighbor in the US where the Federal Reserve has yet to start any reduction in the borrowing cost, right? So if you continue to go lower here, uh, okay, I'm gonna start here with more mortgage renewals coming up and high population growth to put more upward pressure on rents. Analysts and economists say Canadians will feel stressed well into next year and well into next year and after keeping economic growth muted. The outlook remains muted even though Canada got a head start in lowering borrowing costs, becoming the first economic power in, in June to cut rates in the current cycle. It has followed up with two more cuts, bringing the key policy rate to 4.25%. Right then, the Federal Reserve is like, okay, I'm not going to read the Fed. They, can, Canada's inflation adjusted per person expenditure uh, per person expenditure has fallen by 2% since the peak of 2022, 1.1% annually in the second quarter, showing that consumers are reeling under the burden, right? By comparison, that spending in the U.S. grew 2.7% annually in July and is generally considered to be in line with pre-pandemic trend. Then, uh, okay, then there's a divergence. The divergence mainly reflects the, the differing structure of Canadian and U.S. mortgages. So this is also a very important uh, key to understand. What you're seeing in the U.S., uh, okay, I'm not going to read the U.S. one. By contrast, because U.S. is more fixed, rate mortgages 30 year fixed rate mortgages but by contrast canadian mortgages are either variable rate or adjustable after four or five years for homeowners with low interest rates of five years ago who are about to now renew who are coming up for renewal they can expect their payments to jump even with the bank of canada's current series of cuts that's not good for the consumer if it's not good for the consumer consumer is not spending if consumer is not spending then obviously economic activity will be muted, right? So Bank of Governor, sorry, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff McClam said during a press conference in London last week that consumers had less extra money, extra money to spend compared with the 
with their American counterparts because Canadians were spending more to service their mortgage, right? Uh, then it continues to say, uh, it's a wall of mortgage renewals coming up, Bartlett, Bartlett said, and added that this would keep many, com many Canadians under stress way into 2025 and 2026. Right. Obviously, you can continue reading. You can continue reading these articles, but I'm sure you 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 actually you actually get the story here. But uh, let's just read here. In the first quarter, Canadian households spent around 15 percent of their disposable income to meet debt servicing costs, while Americans paid about 10 percent of their income, according to official data. Now they are forced to save more to meet debt obligations. Can Canada's household savings? rate touched 7.2 percent in the last quarter its highest in nine quarters while in the u.s it was at 2.9 percent as of july the lowest since july so since june 2022 the number indicates u.s consumers were still spending much more despite higher rates or despite high rates right so you can clearly see what it what is telling us about the canadian economy right the canadian economy is not doing well the canadian the canadian the canadian consumer or the canadians are actually struggling they feeling the, the pressure of high interest rates because obviously most of them in terms of their mortgage is variable interest rates or it's renewed after five years right so this in this regard in this particular instance interest rate cuts going lower for canadian dollar or for the canadian economy essentially means that the economy is not doing well based on what is underlying beneath the actual economy right so that is why I looked to short the Canadian dollar and I'm confident to continue shorting the Canadian dollar. And that is why, obviously, I still have this actual AUD CAD running because on the, on the other end of the spectrum, I'm, at, I'm bullish on the Australian dollar because the central bank is more in contrast or in divergence with the, Canadi with, the, with the Bank of Canada or the Canadian central bank, right? And that, of course, creates a solid trade, right? Or a solid trending market, right? And another question that was raised was that is is AUD CAD not too high? Well, I'm not going to really answer that one because it's relative. It depends on how you trade and what you consider to be high or what what metric do you use to to, to measure whether the, the market is high or the market is low. Maybe you use RSI. I don't know what you use, right? But in essence, for me, it wasn't low because... Sorry, it wasn't high for me to buy because based on the fundamentals, there's a clear, clear divergence between the two central banks and that is why I ended up shorting the Canadian dollar and going long on the Australian dollar. And I still expect further weakness of the Canadian dollar. The, long, the more they cut interest rates, they will still be pointing towards what towards more weakness that they expect from their economy. And maybe once they hold on cutting interest rates or they pause, then maybe at some at that point we might expect some sort of a relief or a rebound relief uh, from from the Canadian dollar, right? So I just wanted to share that, guys, uh, in terms of uh, answering that question that I was asked and also just to give you guys an update uh, on the actual uh, trade, right? Oh, lastly, let's actually look at... Uh, let's actually look at... Um, Let's actually look at the trade sentiment to see how the how the retail traders are actually positioned, right? Based on the forex sentiment. Obviously, we know that majority of retail traders lose, so let's see what's happening there. Okay, so as you can clearly see, 88% of retail traders are actually short. Only 12% is actually long, right? So majority are selling as price continues to push higher. So I use this obviously as a trade management tool. So what this is essentially telling me is that I should anticipate that AUD CAD will continue pushing higher because majority of retail traders are selling and retail traders are generally wrong, right? If you're going to the daily time frame here real quick, what we can clearly see is that prior to this, you can clearly see that most of retail traders were actually buying as price was falling and they were still buying when, when price started to rebound higher. But now since price is starting to push higher aggressively, they're starting to sell. They are generally wrong, so that's all I'm taking from this, and I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick to my AUD CAD uh, position, obviously because it's backed by clear fundamental facts, or it's a. I have a strong case to stay in this position for now, right? So I just wanted to give you guys that update and to answer that question. And as always, if you found value from this video, share it with other people who might also benefit from it, uh, who might not be aware that there's even something as effective and as efficient as fundamental analysis or some who may be aware but they only think that if it, if you're talking about fundamental analysis you only take talking about trading the economic news calendar or the news that get released via the economic news calendar 
fundamental analysis is way deeper than that that is just scratching the surface if you're just paying attention to the economic calendar but in essence share it with someone who might benefit from it and if you yourself found value like the video if you have not yet liked the video and if you have not yet subscribed do subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video